What's up, everybody? This is Presto. Corporal Nossage. And you are listening to episode 74 of the Nintendads podcast. Whoop, whoop. We're old. We're getting up there. Yeah. We got to start yeah. brainstorming what we're going to do for episode 100. Oh. That's grow a beard. Grow a beard. You can't grow a beard in a single episode. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Some of our episodes are pretty long. <laughs> we just got finished talking about that. Yep. Um, on today's episode, we are going to be talking about the Nintendo Direct. Uh, and if you're not listening to this or watching it live uh, or listening like in the in the near future, this is the February eighth of twenty twenty three Nintendo Direct, and it <sighs> was. It was certainly a thing. It was certainly a thing, and we're gonna. Have yeah, it. yeah. That's 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 a word. It it's was a thing. a thing. It was a thing. It was a whole lot of things, things. were discussed. Things it were was said. talked about. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, before we get all into that, Corporal, what have you been playing? Marvel snapper yeah you've been snapping yeah. i've been snapping no, i've been snapping too the the new season started and uh i got a bunch of cards and i can play like a new archetype but i'm i'm not anywhere as near the news what what kind of what kind of deck are you playing you still playing that odin on reveal i mean i like my odin on reveal i really do i also Classic. have uh uh, I don't know if I should give away my secrets in case you like go up against me again <laughs> but um I have a and I I got this idea from you uh collector's edition what the the collector um, are you using the collector in your deck so much? No no so I I I meant to paste something what's good Nintendo dads welcome in fate maker um I have a I uh, I took this idea from you. It's my Hulk deck, um, yeah. but it is a self-destruct deck. Like yeah. you, a, you use your own guys to kill to deck. increase power. Um, so I, I, you know, that's my Hulk deck, um, which I'm very proud of that deck because I've got a couple of new things and I, I think it really jives really well with itself. You know, like I, uh, the Wolf, I had a pretty Wolverine mean, cards and whatnot. I had a, the, the Wolverine card is so good now. I'm running that. I'm running a discard deck. Which is sort of like a destroy deck, but you destroy your cards before you even play them, and then they play themselves, or they multiply, or they buff other okay. cards. It's, yeah. Um, and we've played each other. We've, we've played yep. battle mode. If you haven't heard, and we're jumping a little bit farther ahead down the notes, but since we're talking about it, um, battle mode is live. You can finally play your friends in Marvel Snap. So, if you don't know, Marvel Snap is a free to play mobile game. Get it? How it's do you not just know about fun. it at this point? I mean, we're For old. Sake. Our viewers are old. Stuff is old. And uh, and of course, if you're interested in the competitive community, uh, we are partnered with Snap Clash, the home for Marvel Snap tournaments, hosting daily and weekly tournaments for the Marvel Snap competitive community. Woo! My goodness. And they do hold a lot of tournaments. They, there's they definitely like a do. There's a huge amount of players. Huge amount of players that are in these daily tournaments. And it's a great community. They'll help you out. They'll let you know what's up. Like They're very friendly. They're very helpful. Yeah. Totally what else have everything. you been playing, Corporal? I mean, Fate Maker's over here in chat just chomping at the bit. His foot is <laughs> on the pedal trying to talk about need for speed heat. Ooh. <coughs> we have been racing. We have been racing. We've been racing um, and chasing. Need uh, Jeremy and, and Twitch over here. So that Porsche, if you put dirt tires on it, it tears up the road in races. Oh, man. Cool. Yeah, we've been playing Need for Speed Heat. We were looking for a game we could all play together in the Discord. And uh, Need for Speed If you Heat. have Xbox Game Pass, it's free on Xbox Game Pass. And it's cross-platform play, which means it's available on Xbox console. And if you own the game or have access to it on your PlayStation, it's cross-platform play with all platforms. 
The only thing it is not is cross progression. So you, you can you play. Yeah, I, heard, I found that out the hard way. So you can play with any one of your friends on any other console. But if you are like myself, who lays in bed at night playing around and then gets up the next day and goes upstairs and sits at the computer to continue playing around, uh, 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 you have to start over. So that's right. That's right. I've got, I've, I'm going to have a good playthrough and a bad playthrough or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's been, um, Playing Heat has been a lot of fun. We have like, I think we have six people on the Discord that have all gotten it, that have been playing together. Yeah. I have become so addicted now to racing games. I prefer this addiction over your Monster Super Hunter. Smash over your Super Smash addiction. Your Monster Hunter addiction, I think, is just slightly on pause. I'm excited that you have a, a tempered pause. addiction. It was just but <laughs> but no yes, one. Need for Speed is definitely quick, occupied. Quick, quick preview. Oh, right here. Foots on the gas. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been playing Need for Speed Heat. I've been playing. Uh, I wasn't playing as much Forza Horizon Five before I got the wheel, but now that I have the wheel, I'm playing it a lot. Playing a lot of Marvel Snap, and of course. As always, it's just implied at this point that I'm playing Monster Hunter. There was the new content update 4 came out. We got Vulcana. We got Risen Crimson Glow Valstrex, who not only has the longest name of any monster in the Monster Hunter series, yeah. but will kick your face in. Um, but we did have a good run on stream the other night with no carts. Me, Spooky, and... Uh, Mr. Happy Fun Time, aka Josh. AKA you guys rocked it. The Hunting Horn Master. Yeah, that was a really fun hunt and the best finishing screen that I've ever seen. Um, what are you drinking now that we've gotten the play stuff out of the way? What do you got? I yes, got... Liquid Death. Liquid Death. Yes. What flavor is that? So this is the green can. It's kind of hard to see, but it's uh, severed lime. Sever, instead of severed limb, severed mm -hmm. lime. Yep, like severed it. lime. I've been enjoying, I'm actually out of them. I drank my last one on stream on Tuesday. But uh, I've been enjoying those Austin East Ciders. I don't know if you have them in your area. No. But Austin East Ciders. Whew. If you like cider, but you don't like them too, too sweet, Austin East Ciders is where it's at. Melissa, thank you for liking the stream. What's up? Woo! Um... Yeah, so let's let's get into it. Also, reminder, I wrote it in my notes so I would remember, and I would have forgot if I didn't write it. Uh, the Nintendads.com is live. And it if is. you're watching this and you follow us, it's not that big of a deal for you because right now it's mostly just a place where we can send people to find our content and figure out where to listen to us. But we will have some content, written stuff, Show I mean, links this beautiful future. banner that's oh, above me right now. Goodness gracious, it's so oh, beautiful. It looks like an oh, album cover. It's art. It is on the website. But only if you view it on desktop, because I haven't figured out how to get it to scale properly. Mobile mode, yeah. Um, so yeah, Nintendo.com. Check it out. Tell a friend. And um, then tell your friends to tell other friends. Yes. This is telephone. By telephone. the end of it, I expect that you're mailing us checks. Send right? a telegram. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So, the Direct. Nintendo Direct was... I, I As all Nintendo Directs, I feel like they're always out of left field, right? They, they I mean, come... we, had, we had 24 hours notice for this one. Yeah. Right, right <laughs> as we so... finished the notes, right as we finished the notes... For the episode that was supposed to be tonight, Nintendo's like, oh, you guys are done with your notes? Cool, we're doing a direct tomorrow, but you don't need to... I mean, don't mind us. Just do your thing. Can I tell um, you that I wish that I was a betting man? Because if I was a third party, if I knew that the Nintendads were building notes for an episode, I would put money down that that episode would be interrupted in some way, shape, or form because Nintendo does something last oh, minute. Oh, it 
so consistent. It's, it's scary consistent. I, the, like, the game the gameplay graphics episode was like on hold for like six months. Six almost. months. Yeah, because something else just kept coming. Oh good. They don't they don't whoever operates their media news cycle is is uh uh, There's a mole. Feed. There's a mole in the Nintendo's <laughs> operation that's feeding yeah. information to Nintendo. I don't know who it is. Yeah, right. It's there's not that many. <laughs> they bugged one of us really early. It on must be our secretary, place. or maybe Second, our yeah. editor. Yeah, or it could be the accountant. Could be the mm, accountant. the accountant. I think, I think it was accountant. Colonel Mustard with the, <laughs> with the gas pedal in the parlor. Uh, uh, what's the girl? The girl in Clue. I have no idea. Veronica Mars. <laughs> no. Um Miss Peacock. It's Miss Miss Peacock. Peacock with the microphone cord in the library. <laughs> <laughs> so Nintendo Direct. This is not chronological order. Um at all. At all. This I is don't order. know who came up with I... the paid DLC. Oh, okay. Fate, we're getting there. Go ahead. Oh, I already know. <laughs> I already know. So I put this in the order that I think people would care about it the most. Yes. Um, and I'm going to let you kick things off because this is your baby. I should have worn my shirt. Right? I, I usually wear my shirt. That's okay. The people, the, pe the people listening, the people that are only listening can't see, so they just pretend you have it on anyway. I have on a shirt. <laughs> A really nice i'm kidding and we're banned <laughs> <laughs> um legend of zelda tears of the kingdom is been given a release date an actual real solid date wait did that i thought I, that we had the release date already that i swear they're not gonna move <clears throat> <clears throat> at all I'm, I mean, pre-orders are up, so they can't move it now. Ah, uh, that's that's the that's the one reason why I'm making this statement. Mm. The, the pre-orders are up, so hopefully things are actually real. Um, so, Muscle Man plays. What's up? Hey, Muscle, what's up? <laughs> Gonna jump by because I'm still at work. Oh, sad tears. Thanks for tuning in. We're gonna make you your can, work fun. You can you can turn it on and then just put it in your pocket. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just saying. Um, I, see, I see so many reactions in the Facebook chat of like tears. And things, <laughs> but I'm not seeing, I don't know if, if my Facebook chat is not working. Oh, you know why? Because Bernie entered the chat. Bernie like, is lurking. The Valentino is lurking in the so, chat. He's smashing that like button. We saw some new things. We saw Luke Skywalker link with what <laughs> used to be a mechanical hand. Right. Oh my so, gosh! My Facebook check actually works. And so the mechanical hand thing—it's something that some people saw before, or it was hinted at, but it was never really explained. And this really wasn't explained that much either. But we did did get to see the mechanical hand thing is an action. Like he could do this force push power thing. So, instead of instead of having to take a cell phone out to use the abilities, <laughs> now it's just yep. built into his hand. Built into his hand, yeah. Uh, we also saw some vehicles. We saw like a quadcopter. We saw some sort of like. <laughs> Do you want some cheese with that wine? Tell him, Bernie. <laughs> um, we saw a car type off road thing. I guess they were they've been looking at speed runs and they're like, listen. You guys are using logs as like jets to fly across the map. You know what? We're just gonna give you some things to ride on so you can stop doing this weird stuff. Um and I mean I th they showed stuff. They showed new stuff. I don't know if they showed any new stuff that was super impactful for how I understand the game working. I mean, vehicles is kind of a cool thing. The the biggest thing to me, and there's a collector's edition. There is a collector's edition for the collector's corporal. I don't know if you're getting the collector's edition, but no, no. I mean, I not worth. So pers personally, to me, I am at the age where I'm not gonna give 
these greedy companies are, are, are what twice the amount of the of the game simply so that I can uh, get a piece of paper that has some things on it and like a pen or something i think it comes with an art book yeah okay the art book is going to be five pages maybe front and back and it's going to be like literally screen grabs from the game also shout out to the greatest art book ever cyberpunk 2077 i think the art i mean i the game. Wait for the game to release, and I'll print my own art book and start selling it. Let Nintendo give me a cease and desist. Like, come on. I mean, they will. They'll do it. They'll lock your now, finger out. Microsoft, I've got lots of negative things to say about Microsoft recently, but Microsoft, when they did like their steel package book for Halo, there was a lot of actual juicy nuggets and information that came with the collector's edition. I don't think we're going to get that kind of fancy uh, content with Tears of the Kingdom. You see, the, you see this glorious reflective steel book right here. For those for those listening and not watching, I'm holding this steel book I have for Monster Hunter Rise. I did not pay. Don't a penny don't extra. don't let him don't let him lie to you. He really just grabbed the salmon can and he's just tapping onto it on screen. Right, this don't. can of eight year old tuna fish. Um, no, I got this. This was a pre order bonus. The steel book. Shout out to Capcom, and I think, pretty sure Best Buy. I never thought I would be saying shout out to Best Buy. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the Steelbook was a pre-order for this. Anyway, I digress. The biggest thing about Tears of the Kingdom that came out of this Direct, to me... No, it didn't. ...was not in the Direct. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the Direct happened, they showed some stuff, they showed the Collector's Edition, and then they said, pre-order's available now. And if you go to pre-order of it, you will see that Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is $70 for the base version. 70 bucks. So now, uh, let's let's just let's just take a quick moment and rewind time for a little bit. Um uh, let me look this up. You you look that up. I will say, so this whole $70 thing, right? This whole $70 thing was started by Sony because the PlayStation 5 has this data uh, archetype infrastructure stuff. That September September tw- uh, says September 16th, 2020. So more than three years ago, Sony announced that they are going to be increasing the cost of their games. Was it that long ago? And the, the Microsoft... Reason- confirmed that they were going to do the same at the beginning of 2021 or that they've they've confirmed that they are in talks about doing it in 2021 but they didn't actually implement it until this year so sony to me and as much as nick yeti will be cheering at home for this and you can ask him to tell you all about it in our discord should you desire and he will I warn you. The PlayStation 5 has admittedly some real ingenuity when it comes to their data and their performance with the PlayStation 5. And to fully optimize and take advantage of that and the dynamic haptics of the controller and all that stuff, there is arguably more effort that needs to be put in to develop a AAA game that takes full advantage of PlayStation 5 stuff. So I get that. I get that. You're going to get extra stuff for extra money. Microsoft saying, well, if they're making their game $70, we're going to make our game $70. Why? Because we have a competing console that's next gen. Next gen. I'm putting big old air quotes for you guys who can't see me right now. Um, We're not going to do anything more. You're not going to get anything more. But it's next gen, so we're going to call it $70. So we have Sony, who I think is kind of justified for $70 for games that are developed with extra stuff. We have Microsoft, who I don't think is justified, but I kind of get it because they're on the next gen bag wagon. And then we have the Switch, sitting here with the power of a mobile device. Alps, Nighthawk, welcome in. 
You know that game? You know that game that was going to be DLC, but then we took it and we made it into its own game? That, that's the one we're going to make $70. So, I, I mean, Fate Maker, yep, in Canada, we went from 69 to 79, PS5s are 89. Uh, and obviously you guys are having a different pay scale than we do, but... <coughs> Tears of the <coughs> Kingdom is going to have to blow my Hyrulean boots off to justify $70. And so far, I don't think a mechanical hand justifies the uh, extra the extra. I 10. am trying to plan a vacation, a cruise with my family. Nights I up. Am, What's up? Welcome in. I am trying to, you know... Uh, do a bunch of housework and repairs. I'm thinking about maybe I'll change my job. I like there's looking a lot of things for, in the work. Looking for steering wheels, you know. I'm I'm not I'm not about to drop seventy dollars, but this boy is a Zelda fan, so we'll see. Maybe I'll you know what I'm probably gonna do. My plan as of right now, maybe I'll get it when it comes out. But my 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 fallback is to. Wait until my local library has it. And <laughs> the local library. It. So, uh, Game Informer had an interview with Nintendo, and the direct statement was We determined the suggested retail price for any Nintendo product on a case by case basis. For example, Pikmin 4 is still only $60. And when asked if 70 was going to be the new baseline price for games, they said, no, we're going to continue to evaluate them on a case by case basis, which so, is it's kind of reassuring, but I still am waiting. I'm still waiting to hear anything that's going to be like, yes, I'm getting Zelda. All they had to do was say, oh, yeah, this is going to be the first co-op Zelda. Sold. I would have had pre-order at $70, co-op Zelda, take my money. But so far, this really does just seem like Breath of the Wild 2. If you show me gameplay from Breath of the Wild 2 or Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild, unless it's showing something in the sky, I could not tell you the difference. Yeah. Like, it's not like it's it's graphically enhanced to my eye. Um, so I'm going to need some more justification for a $70 price tag. Other than we've pushed it back for two years and we need to make up for lost sales. Um, so, so I, I mean, Fate Maker makes the argument. We, we talked about the collector's edition. God of War Ragnarok Special Edition. Nothing touches it the best. Came with a replica of Mjolnir, a map, a dice set, a Kratos figurine, a steel book, a case game, art book, and a guide. Now and that is a collector's a, edition. That's that, there's because there's stuff to collect, there's and the stuff. amount of things is multiple, not just two. Yeah. Like, yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> make your own thing. Leave a comment or uh, say in the chat if you're planning on getting Tears of the Kingdom at release, or if you're gonna wait it out and see see what the deal is. So I will point out Pikmin 4 had the most amount of screen time, I think, than any game in that Direct, yet they're keeping it at $60. Zelda, which we all know is the GOAT of Nintendo, in my opinion, so much more than Mario, and that therefore deserves the $70 price tag. I understand, but I really want to talk about Splatoon. Oh, are we are we really going to I'm jump? I'm, I'm going really to jump to I wanted I wanted to mix some positive things in before we I I understand but I mean okay. I I'm okay I'm okay because there there's could be some positive from this but mm. I I don't see it right away. I'm positive that I'm glad I got the physical version because you returning it is an like option this for like you. Like it's sold at some point. Splatoon 3 <laughs> expansion pass was announced and at first i was like oh and then they showed inkopolis the hub world mm -hmm. and i said oh because inkopolis was uh splatoon, splatoon one. one splatoon one and i said that's the best one that's the best splatoon is splatoon one 
Um, so I saw it, and my thought was that, oh, if you get on the subway train and you go to Inkopolis, you can now play Splatoon 1. Like, here's all of the maps, here's all of the weapons, here's all of the skins. Like, here's Splatoon 1 just with Splatoon 3 mechanics. Like, we've optimized. Like, you can go back to that world and you can play all of those things. And then I was like, oh, that's such a great concept. Maybe there'll be exclusive, uh, you know, clothing and weapons that you can unlock and progress. Or maybe it's you almost play with like, all the Splatoon 1 weapon sets in the Splatoon yeah. 1 maps. Something. Maybe they optimized it. Like, now that is a DLC. Like, that is worth it. So it is it is fair to say Splatoon the Splatoon 3 expansion pass is going to have two waves. Wave 1 is the Inkopolis wave which we will which does not get. get all of the things that I thought it was going to get. And then you're going to have and that's coming in the spring. Um mm-hmm. uh apparently if you pre-order it your receipt says uh May 1st. Somebody did anybody who pre-ordered it if you look at your like receipt it says by may 1st so it looks like may 1st is the default thing wave two is side order and looks very reminiscent of uh the octo expansion looks like Mm -hmm. it's going to be a single player campaign cool um no release date no expectation if you re if you pre-order it no color It says by the end of 2024, it will release. So that's, and no, no real information about it. So the expansion is, I think it's 25, it's 20 or 25. I think it's 25. So So the price, the price right there told me that all of the things that I thought I was going to get from Inkopolis, I wasn't going to get. Because there's no way Nintendo was going to provide that gem to me on a $25 platter. Yeah. It was going to be $40 or, or more. And, and, as and it, the fact, as the it fact that it out, wasn't that price, I knew that right off the yeah. bat. Yeah. As it turns out, they said in the thing, they're like, so you go to Inkopolis, you have the new, you have the old hub from Splatoon 1 in all its glory, Squid Sisters, everything. Old shopkeepers. And they said the the shops are going to be I, functionally the same as the ones in Splatsville. And I thought, okay, so they're the so same. I, they're the same shops, I heard, the same inventory. I heard the word functionally the same, but I also heard weapons and gear. And I, I should have paid closer attention because I immediately thought that that meant functionally the same. Well, yeah, because... You can buy things at the shop. You know, I'm going to be able to buy new things at this new shop. I functional. Think, I think in the direct, I don't think they use the word functional. I, I, I've been saying functional. But oh. I think they said this will have the same gear and weapons as the shops in Splatsville. They so, said something about the shops. And I, I, yeah, I whatever think it was. It was they was, said gear and weapons, but they said the same gear and weapons. Or I uh, yeah, weapons. see, that's that's where that's where it was because I heard gear and weapons. I was like, oh, new world, we're, new you know gear and weapons. We're beating around the bush, but wave one of the twenty five dollar DLC is going to be a new hub world with nothing new in it. It's a skin. So in other it's words, hub skin. Yeah, it's a hub skin. Yeah, it's so like no new gameplay, it's like no the, new content. It's like uh, Fortnite decided to upgrade because winter was coming, and now there's snow on the map. Yeah. So you're not going to get any new content. It's just going to change the area that you're in before you queue into a game. And to me, that is ridiculous. Because, I mean, it's ridiculous because $25 for a hub and then DLC down the line is kind of shysty. But when you consider that Splatoon 3 still has tons of disconnect issues, tons of latency issues, and anemic content updates with maps and weapon sets, it is it is skinny. It's skinny. Somebody give that game a sandwich. They have the audacity 
audacity to sell a lobby for $25 and some single player stuff down the line that we're not going to tell anything about. I mean, the promise of something maybe later. While the main game is still in pretty rough shape and hasn't really received any The main game is desperate for content. We like, need we haven't consistently we need consistently more splatfests. We need consistently new maps being added. We need new skins, new shirts, new pants, I mean, new the visors. The, the splatfests have been more frequent than they've ever been, but I don't I don't care about them because we're going to spend more time trying to get back into a lobby after getting disconnected for the fifth time in a row in one yeah. sitting. And it's just like the game is in rough shape and this is not this is not the answer. This is just going to aggravate people. I mean, some people are are eating it up being like if you don't like it, don't buy it. And I get that, but it's like come on. They're not uh I don't know. I can't. I don't have. I don't have that much more to say about it. Aside from, I'm not gonna get it unless the single player stuff is phenomenal, and I'll buy it when I'm actually getting content with it, not when I'm getting a new lobby skin and aggravation mm -hmm. from the lobbies that still aren't fixed. And tabletop table table turf battle, the card battler thing, has still not been made multiplayer. It still hasn't happened. The game's been I, out for how many months? Six months? I, we, I was expecting more from Splatoon 3 at this point, and y you're just not getting it. Jo and, uh, I mean, I'm it sorry. was my biggest disappointment of the year, and Josh is mad about it in the chat. See? see we're I not knew the you ones. would be, Josh. I knew this would ruffle your feathers. We're not the only ones who are upset. So... Oh goodness! Zelda, or uh, Zelda's coming out. That's a plus. I mean, yay! But however, otherwise, the day before then... is looking for phenomenal first-person shooter zombie survival MMO. I'm interested in that. Yeah, the day before. I'm yep. interested in that. Um, but this direct was not all doom and gloom. Correct. We just got that out of the way. So there has been there has been rumors, there has been whisperings, there has been promises. I don't know if there's been promises, but we've been waiting on a Metroid Prime re-release, a port, perhaps a remake. Well, not a remake, a remaster, and they came through with it. And not only did they come through with it, and it looks good, it came out hours after the direct. It's out right now. Yep. Nick Getty is somewhere in a dark room with headphones on playing that <laughs> game, and I'm jealous of him. Um, I mean, I've I've read five articles. I didn't read them because I know what they say, but I've seen articles on articles saying Metroid Prime has aged like a fine wine. And if you haven't played it in a long time, this $40 remaster, it's not full price. Thank you. Not 60, not Thank 70. You. It's 40 bucks, which I think is a fair price because that game holds up. It's quality. It looks good. If you haven't played it in a long time, now's a good time. There's like a whole generation of people who have the Switch because it's a GameCube game. This wasn't Wii. This wasn't Wii U. This was GameCube. Uh, there's a whole generation of people who have Switches that haven't played this game and get to play it for the first time again. Uh... And I am, I'm going to get it, but I'm not going to get it right now because I am, I mean, you heard at the top of the top of the show, Need for Speed, Monster Hunter, Verizon. I keep wanting to say Verizon because I'm trying to say Forza Horizon and it turns yep, into yep. Verizon. But I'm playing a whole bunch of stuff. I don't have any, I don't have any real estate in my, in my life for another game, but it's worth it. Presto recommends. I played the hell out of that game. <laughs> Um. Yeah, it was it was their first attempt. Yeah, this was the first first person Metroid game, and people people didn't know how Metroidvania game was going to transfer or translate to first person. But it's a banger. It's absolutely. Have you played through it before, Corporal? No. <gasps> Metroid Prime stream when? <laughs> Metroid Prime stream when? Um. Yeah. So that was cool. 
what else? There was other good things in this direct. Oh yeah, the Nintendo they announced the gameplay. The Game Boy uh um it was Game Boy and the original game. Yeah, your your little your little toy up there. But they're bringing the My content little toy. Your little toy. They're bringing the content to the online and I have not uh gotten um Nintendo Online, whatever the service is called. Uh, I think the it's ex- the expansion. The expansion. Yeah, the pass. expansion. Um, now I haven't gotten it, so like these isn't things that are going to directly affect me. But I think it's really great that they're bringing some of these older things back to the console. Uh, and you know, Zelda's Link Awakening is a lovely game. I wanted to point out that you notice you can play Tetris and rearrange the Tetronodons in their space. The way that they said that, did you catch that? No. If you go back and rewatch it and listen specifically to the Tetris portion of it, they have a name that they call the individual pieces. Tetramino. Uh, the Tetramino. Tre- the Tetraminos, yes. The Tetraminos. I've never heard that before. Oh, yeah. Tetramino. They have the Tetramino have names. Oh, I I didn't they know that. They have either. names. I forget it's what the L shape, the straight shape, the Z shape. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like Lefty, like Carl or something. All I know is that the straight piece, the line piece, the best piece is named <laughs> Hero. I mean, it is the hero of the game. There's a, there's a narrative about the fall of Soviet Russia in that game somewhere. And the story <laughs> has a hero. Um, but yeah, it's going to be, yeah, there's Tetris. Mario Land 2, the Golden Coins. Such an underrated Mario game. Such an underrated game. I play the hell out of that. Um, Metroid 2, uh, another classic. Mario Land 3, Kirby's Dream Land, the original one. Zelda Minish Cap, because they got the advanced titles in there too. Mario Kart, they didn't mention it. But I saw it in the background. Golden Sun. One of the best, arguably the best RPGs for the Game Boy before they got into the the DSs and the separate screens and stuff. Golden Sun was fantastic. There was such a strong push for one of the main characters in that game to be in Smash. So many fake trailers featuring that character. Uh, But yeah, there's some really good stuff. Uh, coming there. They're slowly making that expansion pass worth it. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I think I think the the Splatoon three expansion pass should have been included in in the online in thing. The online, yeah. And if they if they take your pre order money and they make it part of the online expansion pass later on, later on, there's going to be riots in the street. Especially if they do it before the second wave comes out. That's... After nobody after nobody pre-orders it. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's that's a huge slight to the fans. I mean, they haven't done it yet, but I can see it happening. Because yeah. the, the, the Octo expansion for Splatoon 2 is available to the expansion pass holders for free. Mm-hmm. And I started playing through it, and it's really cool got very so i i was distracted because i was looking at an article going back to legend of zelda they did release the new amiibo uh with uh zelda's hand or link's hand wow i just did the (laughs) did the thing (laughs) um with link's hand and they also announced uh that there are so in Breath of the Wild, you can change your outfits and different gear and different gear and different effects. They have different amiibos, which will unlock different paragliders. So you'll have the horse paraglider, the Majora's Mask paraglider. I saw that. Uh, That's cool. Yeah, so I mean, those are pretty neat. And somebody else is pointing out, and I I missed it from uh, from the direct, but the Master Sword is shown at some point during the wreck and it looks like it is destroyed. Yeah, it is like that's their way of saying, yes, this game is going to have weapon durability again. We know you hate it, but too bad. <laughs> so I, I'm interested to see what the story arc for that. I is. didn't that's catch all. that. Yeah, that's interesting. 
I I'm hoping they add a lot of advanced things because I think they the development team has been watching as people do the absolute most out of pocket unhinged things in Breath mm-hmm. of the Wild one uh with with all the different mechanics and I really hope that they got the message like hey this player base wants to do they want cool things to play with they want advanced toys they need more than like than the basics so let's give it to them and I hope that that is provided hope they leave it as sandboxy as, as it, the yeah. first one was maybe a little bit more straightforward because a lot of that advanced uh breath of the wild stuff is done through exploits and glitches where you like enter the thing skin an amiibo back out <laughs> change like i really hope they incorporate some more creative advanced mechanics without having to abuse exploits because i think all that stuff is really cool but i'm not gonna i i don't want i have no desire to learn it if it was baked yeah. in the game i would have more of an appreciation for it but i, I agreed know. They, they showed some cool stuff, but not $70 worth of stuff. Yeah, yeah, no. Yo, Tony and MV, aloha. Hello, hello. Aloha. Hawaii is treating you warmly. Um, The last, this might be the last high point of the direct. Um, if you call it a high point. It's a, it's a, it's a medium high point. It's not a valley. It's a high point for me. Um, okay. Dead Cells Castlevania DLC, March sixth. Um, this isn't new news, but the release date is new, and I think it's up for pre-orders. I I still don't understand pre-orders for digital products months in advance. Like preloading it like the week before, cool. Pre-ordering it now, I I get that they want to gauge sales, but. I, I don't know. It's not like they're going to run out of of bytes and data. But Dead Cells Castlevania, I love Dead Cells. I have it on PC. I have it on Switch. It's amazing, and I am absolutely picking this up. Might stream it based on interest, if you guys are interested in seeing. I, I streamed a couple, uh, a couple times of the original Dead Cells, and people were into it. Um, but it was towards the tail end of when I was stopping playing it because I was just running into a wall of difficulty. But yeah, Castlevania Dead Cells, like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, of the rest of the direct, there, there were so a lot other... of other games that were announced. Now, we are the Nintendo Dads, and I'm not going to say that we hate other games that aren't Nintendo, but most of these games we don't play or don't have a care for. There's very few games on here that may have like perked my ear or my interest, but overall I was not like super interested in them. There's one that looked interesting, uh, and that was Sea of Stars. It's a an upcoming RPG. I really liked the art style of it. So like I'm interested to see what happens with that game as it comes out. That one's got <coughs> some anticipation. I've heard yeah. I've heard some excitement for that. <coughs> Um, I think there was one other one. It was uh, was it Ghost Detective? I think it was Ghost Detective. Ghost Detective, um, yeah. Ghost Detective game, not whatever that one was horrible. Um, yeah, yeah, it was the Ghost Detective game because it to me it looked very much like Nintendo's twist on Murderer. Um, so I'm I'm interested to see how good that game is. Uh, but the rest of the games, uh, I mean... So we had Xenoblade DLC, which if you're a Xenoblade fan, I mean, th- there's no disrespect to Xenoblade here. Xenoblade yeah. 3 has been like praise to high heaven. I'm afraid if I get into it, I will get addicted. And maybe maybe someday. Um, there was some weird fashion game that was like the second game that they showed. And as I was watching the direct, the chat was just like lighting people up. They're just like, what is, is this an indie direct? Check the title. No, it says regular direct. What is this? It felt like an indie direct for like 70% of the direct. <laughs> um, we had Pikmin 4, obviously. 
There's a Tron puzzle game that's coming out. Uh, a Mickey Mouse game. A Bayonetta prequel. Fire Emblem expansion pass. Octopath Traveler 2 demo. Again, no disrespect. Octopath Traveler, excellent, excellent RPG. So demo, I'm sure, is very exciting to a lot of people. We Love Katamari is getting a remaster. That's one to pick up on sale. Amazing, amazing, weird, but amazing game from PlayStation era. Um, Omega Strikers is some free-to-play air hockey type MOBA thing. Um, Advanced Wars. This I was surprised to see because I forgot about that this game never came out. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I forgot that it didn't come out. Advanced Wars Reboot was supposed to come out, and the rumor was that it was delayed because it was supposed to release, like, right as uh, Russia invaded Ukraine. And the storylines and themes of Advanced Wars 1 and 2, which is what the reboot includes, was a little too close to that. Um, and they thought it there were gonna there were gonna be some sensitivities there, uh, so they pulled it or delayed it, supposedly. I don't know if that's confirmed, but it got a re it got a new release date in April twenty first. So I played Advance Wars one on that little Game Boy right there, and it's fun if you like 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 turn based tactical. Uh, I feel like you I feel like you might be into it. Because you like you like StarCraft, Tiberian Sun, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's a turn-based, more RPG elements of that, of a real-time strategy game. But it's not real-time. It's like turn-based. You say stuff. that now. I'm like, so the closest thing that I have access to on the Xbox is Halo Wars. Um, and Halo Wars is very StarCraft-y. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's got the so... word Wars in it, so it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Same thing. Um, Kirby Return to Dreamland got announced to have an extra campaign mode, an extra game campaign that's available after you beat the story mode. This is, uh, I think this was originally for the SNES. I'm slowly becoming interested in this game, but this is another one that should be 30 or 40 bucks. It's a full $60 title, and it's a remake of a classic Kirby game. That's not going to cut it. For me. Katamari reroll. I mean, did you play the original Katamari? Oh yes, but that's not the re the remake the re release of that the remaster is not sixty dollars. No, true. Katamari is it's absolutely bizarre. I used to play it with uh with foe aka Wolf by Trade. We used to have many beers and play that game, and that's the setting for it. Absolutely, it's, <laughs> it's so weirdly Japanese. Um, but Kirby's Dreamland looks like one that I would pick up on sale to play with my kid because he likes Kirby. It's very like age appropriate. It's got enough there that adults will find some enjoyment out of it. And the new campaign has couch co-op. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, by a uh, Batten or Byton Katos HD remaster. I think that's a pretty well-known title, just not well-known to me in my pronunciation. Um, <laughs> Fantasy Life looks like an Animal Crossing copycat with combat. Farm farm life simulator again. Uh, yeah, I, I don't... There, there's a lot of that coming out, and I'm not sure why. I, I mean... I if mean, not as much jam. as the last, what was that last? Uh, oh my God, yes. Fall. It was like, that was the whole direct. It was yep. like, this farm, this farm, forget roguelike, it's farm-like. Uh, Professor Layton got a new game. I think that's a puzzle series. Um, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Zombified Reanimated Corpse is continuing to get new tracks. With mm -hmm. the Nintendo expansion pack. Um, and then Have a Nice Death. The little indie roguelike that I actually have on Steam, which is a great game, um, is coming out in March. So if you like roguelikes and you like sort of 2D platformer, I love it. The, it. You play as Death, who is constantly drinking coffee. And I don't know what else you could possibly ask for. <laughs> In a game. I feel, I feel like that's your personal aesthetic. Yes. It's, I mean, it's a vibe. 
It is a vibe. It's, it's your vibe. <laughs> um, I wish I had coffee right now. That was too late, but I, I just want something to sip on. Um, so I, I was wrong. Um, Ghost Detective, you have it abbreviated here. It's Ghost Trick, comma, Phantom Detective is the name of the game. Uh, um, and it's not what I thought I was referring to. Is that the one that kind of looks like Persona? It's got like the yes. car, like a little Porsche looking car. Well, uh, in the, the, in thing, the t- cover. I, th- I think. Are you referring to Deco Police? Oh, maybe. That's I what know. I thought I was referring to. I was referring to the art, the uh, detective RPG Deco Police. Okay, that's yeah. that's what I was thinking of. Not uh, Ghost Detective. Yeah, not Ghost. The detective. fact that there's two detective games that are so close in theme that we can't even <laughs> tell them apart, and they both have weird long names. Yeah. Says, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that, game, that, that that looks cool. Looks it's a it's another pickup on sale. Slash interesting from your yeah. local library, I think. Well, uh, uh, Deco Police, um, is this the one that's made by, one of the ones that, I think the, uh, Ghost Detective is the one that's made by Capcom. Um. Yes. Deco Police is not. I I don't think. But, uh. The one, the one by Capcom does also look good. They both look like good games. Yeah, they're just not. If you like really, really, really specific types, bizarre. Of games. Yeah. If you like puzzle, anime, ghost, detective games, this game is for you. Yeah, I would. The one I was referring to that I think that I'd be more interested in is the Deco Police one. Yeah, that's the one with the guy with the car in the, yes. in the cover. Yeah, that one looks like Persona. That one looks interesting. Um, and there was some more. There was some more stuff in the direct, like small indie titles that like flash on the screen that are coming. Um, yeah, they those, ran those through a the bunch. Major, those were the major beats. Tears of the Kingdom stuff, Metroid Prime, Splatoon three, Nintendo Game Boy stuff, Dead Cells was the short list of things that I thought was worth talking about in the episode. There was a lot. There was a lot that wasn't. And this is, this is, uh, I mean, we're, we're rolling into spring here and Nintendo has already said that they're not participating in E3. Yep. So Nintendo PlayStation and Xbox have announced that they will not participate in E3. So we are going to get our own E3 esque direct from each of them and then what's what's going to be at e3 is my question it's going to be it's going to be it's going to be um the hardware developers who are pushing a game to be ran on their graphics card it's going to be uh, i'd like i was gonna say like bethesda but they got bought by microsoft so that's not gonna happen i mean hopefully (laughs) hopefully hopefully developers like capcom come in and just they're like oh this is our show now yeah. The big boys are away. Yeah. Let's go. Well, in in some respect, I think I would like that better because E3 became oh, we only need to watch it to watch the, you know, the two big guys in in Nintendo. And like people who are hardcore Bethesda fans would hang out for Bethesda direct, but there wasn't ever a, a whole lot. I know, but like, now no now nobody is going to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope that it'll be uh not a spectacle on stage but a, like an event where like uh, maybe they can send in videos this, i don't know i don't know how they're going to run be, it this might be e3's return to being like an industry show versus a complete media commercial yeah. yeah um which if you're in the industry i guess that's probably nice because you're going to be able to actually go and do business instead of just being like swarmed by media and rabid fans whose uncle works in Nintendo and got them a pass into the show. Um, yeah. Uh, but I'd love to see them. I'd love to see them come in and run over. But the the point that I was on my way to make was I, 
when does the big direct come with the titles that are coming out this year? Because this, this ain't it, right? Metroid Prime came out. That was a big anticipated thing. I guess they could announce Metroid Prime 4 in the next. That's the only kind of question mark that's missing, but I don't think that's getting announced this year. Um, Pokemon just came out, so maybe DLC for Pokemon is coming out this year. Zelda is coming out soon. Like, what's... What are we getting summer, fall, winter? Because I, I mean, they're hopefully they're going to just be big, fat, awesome surprises. Because I can't yeah. think of anything that's like in the wings that we're waiting to hear about. I mean, Zelda was the only thing that I was waiting for. So yeah, I don't know. I'm waiting for June, but not for Nintendo things. We got Diablo and uh, and Street Fighter. So I don't know. I want Mario Odyssey 2. Really? Yes. Absolutely. Mario Odyssey is the best 3D Mario platformer. Mic drop. Okay. I think it's better than Mario 64. I think it's better than Sunshine. I think it's better than Galaxy 1, 2, and 3. I think that's... Do you remember... Uh, knockout the dodgeball game oh yes did you hear oh yeah that's we should. you know what we're gonna have a little impromptu quick section there were like 23 live service games that got announced Cut. that they're shutting down in the last month apex yep. mobile and uh i think PUBG mobile they're pulling support for they're shutting down uh knockout City. Knockout City, Knockout yes. City. Uh Rumbleverse that's been out oh, yep. for even less time. Yep. Yep. Is is getting the plug pulled. There's a whole bunch of them that are going under. I think we are finally starting to see all these I don't want to be mean because I know some of these developers work really hard and it's great but like there's there's a lot of there's a lot of free to play specifically free to play battle royale type games out there the market is saturated snuff yeah the, the market is saturated there's the the amount of quality in some of these others is just not there on top of it the ones that are the kingpins over control the market so it's almost impossible for newer titles like this to get in and to stay successful it just wasn't gonna happen i I mean fortnite people people are so like battle royale is not like an attractive thing anymore fortnite has to reinvent itself every Every, quarter just to retain some of its player base fortnite used to be everything like there were people who would log into Fortnite to go to watch a concert, like yeah. that that digital live concert that they did. Like Fortnite was a phenomenon. I I think they've retained, they've re they've re gotten people into the game with no build mode, with yeah. a bunch of the new mechanics around sliding and climbing and moving around, um, through some very like specific and timely. Uh, third party partnerships like Goku, mm-hmm. they added Dragon Ball Z people. Like, that is yep. a huge, like, okay, now I'm going to play this because I can be Goku with an assault rifle. Well, yeah, they, they had, they brought in uh, Santa, they brought in um, Batman, <laughs> they brought in Thanos, they, they brought in a lot of, yeah, like, third party. It, you it know, was... you know what, you know what, live service free to play game is still ticking around. That's outlasted all these all these hype people. DC what? Universe Online is still oh alive my god and putting out content. Oh. It it is it is an absolute mess on the Switch, but it will always have a place well, in my heart from when we played on a PvP server. Not not in the same uh, multiplayer online thing, but Fortnite Two is getting a big update coming. Or team, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Team Fortress Two. 
Team Fortress 2 is getting a big really? update coming. Yeah. So Team Fortress, to me, is... I can't believe that's... It's still oh, scary. they are getting a big update. It's, 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 it was just recently announced. But, like, they are the, they've got to be, like, the longest running uh, uh, something. They, because yeah. they have been around forever. Here's the question. How long until we're sitting here talking about how they're shutting down Overwatch 2, do you think? What do you, what do you give it? Five because years at max. Five years? At max. At max. At absolute at absolute I, max. No, I I would say you, three years at max. I, I was gonna say three years. That's why I hesitated. I was gonna say three years, but I I it's EA. Like they, they've got It's not EA, it's Blizzard. Not bl- I'm sorry, it's Blizzard. Yeah. They've got they've got some sort of clout and they've got enough bank that if they want to limp it along, they will. But they're about to be Microsoft's pet now. And Microsoft, yeah. if Microsoft cuts support for Halo for not doing well enough, Overwatch 2 has not a prayer. Yeah. yeah. Not a prayer. I, I the agree. colored Genji skins are not going to matter <laughs> when Daddy Microsoft comes a knocking and asks how many people paid for it. Phil Spencer's gonna put his boot on top of that gorilla. Oh man. <clears throat> Do better. Um all right, I think I think that's our show. Look at us being timely. I know, right? How about it? We said it, we manifested this episode into efficiency. There's a lot of games that got terminated. It's very interesting to see their retirement coming. Yeah, it's 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 I mean, they they all are a part of that 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 phase of them just dying out. They're no longer around. Uh I wonder what the Terminator would be called in his retirement. Like, I think he'd be the the ex Terminator. I knew it. That was such a long, such a long setup. But I give you so much (laughs) kudos for making that joke. And and in like finding that joke and being like, you know what, work in pest control. I'm gonna make an exterminator <laughs> joke and I'm gonna tie it into the theme of the episode. But I knew it was you. Can, if you watch, if you rewatch the episode, you can see me grimacing for like a solid 15 seconds before that. <laughs> the problem is, is that you're like, this is not in the show notes. What are you doing to me right now? No, I I just know because as soon as we start saying, oh, that's our episode, and you're like. You know what? I haven't had meatballs lately, and I'm like, here it comes. I don't know where this is going. Uh, yeah. So I have a meatball joke somewhere. Do you really? Yeah. I, it fell off the pa- plate, though, and rolled down the street. I hate you. <laughs> I just... How, how did that even work? How did you get me to set myself up? If I had a hat, I'd take it off for you. That is a terrible terrible gift to curse. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, that's our show. Come hang out with us on Discord. Uh, Corporal, you'll be streaming Sunday, yeah? Yeah. What's your whole stream? If I can, Need for Speed. (gasps) Need for Speed. Oh, yeah. We have to go see if uh, Need for Speed is going to melt Corporal's motherboard again. (laughs) Uh, we're going to go do that testing. Uh, right. Now. I'm mad about it. Well, we're going to fix it. Um, <coughs> yeah, so he'll see you on Sunday. I will see you on Tuesday with more Monster Hunter. And uh, have a great weekend, everybody. Bye. Peace.